how you, but I just went out on an adventure. It's called grocery shopping. Oh, we had a blizzard. I mean, a really real blizzard. I don't know. We got over a foot. Um, at a foot, it, it's irrelevant to me. If it goes to three feet, I would tell you, but it didn't. So, I need more food. Well, I got a corned beef because, I mean, St. Patty's came and went. Um, so I'm going to do corned beef, cabbage, and potatoes. I do it in the oven. I'll show you guys how I do that. I got two thin T-bones, some beef smoked sausage to do with potatoes, an onion. I got one onion and I was supposed to get two. And I think I broke all the rounds up. Oh. <laughs> so, I got... I thought I got four of those. Then, yeah, there's the fourth one. I'm telling you. So I got two Italian dry salami with Gouda. And then two with Italian dry salami. And Gouda. Let's see what other one. Oh, the green one. The salami with the white cheddar. Two albacore. Because I promised... My ex-husband, I wouldn't eat tuna because of the mercury. Some green beans to go with the kielbasa. Raw sugar. Then, um, I'm going to do some cupcakes. You know those ones that were popular, I don't know, during the holidays, where you just take this, this, and half a bag of this. Don't do a whole bag like I did, because then they just become too chocolate gooey. Um, stir it all together and put them in muffin cups. You don't, you don't add anything else except the three ingredients. I got two bags of the baby Dutch yellow potatoes because those are the ones I like. One for the corned beef, one for the kielbasa. Well, not quite. Some cabbage. Then you say, why did you buy more of this? Well, Danny was here, and he so he added half and half, and it actually came out really good. Um, it's easier on his stomach, so I'm going to do half and half again and see if it still tastes that good. Um, I got a can of chicken, um, four navel oranges, some Smart Balance. Bread. Oh, I'm in the car is toilet paper because you know how I'm spoiled. <laughs> and breakfast drinks. So I'll put this away and uh, tell you what's been happening. <laughs> it's been interesting to say the least. <laughs> oh, groceries are put away. I tried to walk the other day and I could not keep it together. I laughed and laughed and laughed. I, I did like two or three takes and I said, forget it, forget it. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, I have no idea what my last vlog was about. I'm getting ready to edit it today because I, <laughs> I did one of those things where I zoomed out and I turned it around and looked at my face. Boy, you can see every little lot. I need to drink more water really more water. I need to start taking my uh, vitamins again. So I see, so what's been new around here? Well, we, like I said, we had a blizzard. <laughs> it, it was, you know, it was, it was supposed to snow like, I don't know, like three or four days ago and nothing happened. Then it's, they said, okay, well, it's going to snow. And, um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's snowing. And then it starts snowing. And then it starts really snowing. And it was like, oh. Now, March and April is when we get our moisture here. So my daughter, it was so funny. 
because <laughs> I watched the kids the other day because my granddaughter's um, birthday was two days ago. <laughs> they hadn't gotten anything yet. <laughs> so my d granddaughter wanted the skates, you know, the tennis shoes with the skates on them. And then she wanted a mermaid tail. And this is like a new swim thing. You put the mermaid tail on and swim. Uh, we're, we're all just really nervous over this one. Then what was the third thing she wanted? She only wanted three things. Because um, she knew the skates were expensive. She didn't think the mermaid tail was expensive. But the skates were. Uh, I can't remember. And um, I gave her her a birthday card with her traditional for as many years as they are I give them you know <laughs> it embarrasses my uh, you know the, the, my nephew when he gets uh, you know 30 ones but I put ones in there for every year that they're old so I gave gave her a card with eight ones and then you know we're going to be celebrating and dying her eggs and dying eggs and celebrating her birthday here in just a couple days. <laughs> God, this is getting confusing. So, so anyway, I got shoveled out, which, you know, was a, a, a bit of a hassle. Got my car shoveled off. Um, I don't have a garage. Um, anytime I've had a garage, I've never been able to park my car in it anyway. Here, let me turn the furnace down because you won't be able to hear me over. Well, I've been sitting here drinking some coffee. Um, I thought we'd do the scent trunk. I sent away for scent trunk. And it's like $4.95 for the shipping and they give you a free sample. I don't know. We'll look in it. I just opened it. But it says, what are fragrant notes? <laughs> This is like one of those things where you have to think. <laughs> a note is a building block of a scent. There are literally thousands of them. Some you might be familiar with. Vanilla and honey and so on and so forth. Then there are top notes, middle notes, and base notes. We can also group notes based on how long they take before the nose picks them up. Sounds kind of strange. Notes with heavier molecular <laughs> molecules appear later, while lighter molecules can appear right away. <laughs> I have an alarm going off on my phone. Oh, I have to do internet work. Um, let's see. We call these notes top, middle, and base. And then an accord is like a choir in a music. A chord in music. It is a mixture of notes and creates the theme of the fragrance. Over time, we learn more and more about the notes that you like, and we can send you fragrances. So basically, these are some perfume people. I'm sure they have a name. <laughs> but why should I pretend to be something I'm not? Um, and you can, you know, the first one is like, um, yeah, four ninety five in shipping. Then the next ones, um, I think it's like you can get a monthly seasonal, I think. Um, I'll, you know, I'll put all the info. It's just some senttrunk.com. So, it would, they were offering a free atomizer. Let's see if there's anything. So basically, they ask you what you like. And I like Chanel number no. 5. There are no other ones. It says our stories. They're looking for that niche market, you know, instead of a broad you know, market. We found it sent trunk to bring old school quality to those who are sick of the mass production and advertisements. We don't believe that those big celebrities endorse 
a good fragrance. Sorry, Johnny Depp. By partnering with the great independent perfumers and selling their creations directly to you online, we can offer an exceptional quality at a reasonable price. We believe that buying fra fragrances should be easy and enjoyable. I agree with that comment. With scent truck, trunk, it is. We also believe it is social responsibility to, and a portion of our sales go to mental health research. That was the second reason why I thought that they were like an excellent company. So this subscription, each month received three fragrances handmade by passionate perfumers. Two, turn your living room into a niche bouquet. Experiment with such fragrances to learn and fit your vibe. Tell us about your experience. Rate the fragrances so that we can improve your next month's selection. And I believe it's not, it's eighteen ninety five. So I told them I like Chanel. So let's see what they got. So they even give you a little card. Isn't that cute? And this one is by Ramon Ma Monigal. M-O-N-E-J-E-L. The niche fragrances are made to take you on an obligatory journey. Oh, olfactory journey. My glasses are like weird. Uh, <laughs> my brain is weird too. Part of what makes niche special is how the scent changes over time. Try this fragrance on your wrist and pay attention to how it changes throughout the day. See if you can pick the top notes, the middle notes, and the base notes. Well, here I'm cheating. It says the top notes are rose and jasmine. The middle notes are black currant and cassis, C-A-S-S-I-S. And the base notes are black li licorice and cedar. Oh, I like them. So let's try it. Oh, it's quite lovely. At first, it just smells a little like men's perfume. Cologne. Oh, it is really nice. And it is in the category of... Oh, I really like it. Okay, I'm sold. I'll try a month of it. Um. Oh, I'm instantly sold. This is really excellent. And I believe their monthly subscription, like I said, is $18.95, and you get three. And they give you this for the... It's basically a free trial, and you pay shipping and handling for $4.95. I really like it. Ah! Well, I'm going to have to write them and tell them that I actually do like this. Um, maybe I can get us some discount. I doubt it, but you never know. I mean, I kind of smell the rose and jasmine. Oh, well. I, I, you know, I don't want to be sniffing my wrist the rest of this video. But I do like it. And I actually would wear this. Um... I'm not sold really easy, but when I like perfumes, I, see, I'm one of those people that, like, I, I go, smell, smell, I go, ugh, 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 love it. And there's not too much in between. There really isn't. That's why it's so hard for me to find perfumes. Um, I settled on the um, Juicy Couture La La because of the cost, but I got to tell you, I really like this. And I, you know, this is the one thing that I kind of thought I dreaded opening because I'm just so hard. It was like I was going to go, Bleh. it's awful smelling. So let's see. Uh, oh, got in a fight with a friend of mine over Trump. 
ay 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 this Trump st stuff is starting to get really t tense. I'm sorry, you know, it's not that I find great humor in the stuff that he says, but I just find great humor in the whole situation that he hasn't been thrown out of the country or something. <laughs> and my opinion over the Chicago incident was what you know, brought this difference. First, it was a spirit debate, and it actually turned into an argument, and that's when I refused to discuss it any longer. I um, just won't argue. It's not my nature. I grew up with a very abusive mother, and I just don't go there. Uh, I just don't go there. But having spent a lot of time in Chicago, that's just the snow falling. <laughs> Nothing fell down. Um, for those of you that don't know, I was raised more or less by a village. I was raised by my grandmother, um, and um, I spent several months in over a course of a year in Chicago, New Orleans, and Texas. Um, I would go from my grandmother's to my uncle's to my uncle's to my aunt. <laughs> so I've been to Chicago quite a bit <laughs> for several decades. <laughs> and I would not have sent Trump there. And so to me, it was a, a, a really good PR gig. Um, because knowing Chicagoans and anyone who is in politics would say, don't go. No, you don't mess with the people in Chicago. So, that's my position on it. But that is just my opinion. And, um, you know, I don't think it turned out the way they thought it would. Um, but she finds no more humor in anything, does not want to talk to Trump about Trump. And basically, just overreacted. Um, it, you know, since you know we've kissed and made up, but um, you know, I just asked her, please, next time, you know, stand up, walk away. Don't you know? Don't get so upset because if this is you know, by her behaving like that, it's basically what Trump wants. And I'm sorry, he, he has said some horrible things and maybe I should just stop talking about it. I'm debating on it. <laughs> but you know, it hurt my feelings a little that, you know, I always love a good spirited debate. I really do. But when people start getting really hostile over things, it's like, hey, at the end of the year, you can have your say. In November, everybody gets to say who they want. And if you don't want either of them, don't vote for either of them. But please vote for all the other people running. <laughs> or write in. I don't know what to do over this one. Well, let's see. So the blizzard, it was fun. I did nothing um, yesterday because, hey, what? It's too much snow for me to navigate. Um, in this city, um, back roads do not get plowed, so you better be willing to hustle your little bottom over all that snow. Uh, so it's just safer to stay home. I didn't need anything. I, you know, I still have leftover soup that needs to be eaten. But it, it did kind of put a crimp in a party. So we will be having the party tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> other than that, I'm going to make corned beef because I missed it. I didn't want to go out. Um, I, you know, after two days of it melting, I'm, you know, I'm good. And I still had to still move quite a bit of snow. Um, so, you know, going to do corned beef and cabbage. And I bake mine. Actually, I learned to bake mine from uh, a clerk, a checkout clerk at Safeway. 
and um, oh, I owe a public apology to all flight attendants that I called stewardess. Um, I'm sorry, and I will put in the down box of that video. I'm sorry. I really am. Um, I just, it's not like I don't fly quite often because I do. Um, but I learned how to do this recipe from a clerk. And she said, don't boil it because I've always boiled it on the stove. She said, just throw it in a pan and set it to go. And I, you know, I cook the potatoes and the corned beef. And then I throw the cabbage in and just let her rip. And it, you know, it comes out perfect. And it's no mess, no fuss. Well, I'm going to drink a little coffee and try to get it together a little. I'm a little scattered today. Oh, it's like I felt like a pioneer this morning digging myself out. So, I'm kind of cleaning up <laughs> cleaning up the uh, kitchen needs it. So, I cook my uh, corned beef in one of these, I don't know, what do you call them, blue enamel pans. And I use the bigger one, um, which, you know, when everything, this is going to cook down. Um, so it looks really big. But it's easier to put the cabbage and everything in. So I cook it at 400 because I'm at high altitude. So I start the corned beef. Then I will wash off the potatoes after I clean up the kitchen. Um, and I don't know how long I cook this for. But I cook it at 400 because I think it should be cooked at 375, but I have high altitude. So at high altitude, we always just had 25 degrees. It's just the way it goes. I'm not sure what high altitude <laughs> recipes say, but it's just what we do, okay? So I added the full can of this one, and this one has like fourth or a little over a fourth left, the Cafe Bustella, because uh, I just got off the phone to Dan, and he said that's how he added them. So my coffee thing and so we'll see how it works again so funny he like knew exactly how, he had, how it was done so put this one in the cover and he said what he did is after it got down just a little he poured the rest of them in the rest of it in so We'll see. But this is skunk. But if it, it's not as strong to him. And I think that's why he likes it. It's still very much acceptable for my taste. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm always willing to give a little. Um, so I'm going to try to get the muffins made. I doubt that I'll get them made today. No. And because probably by the time the corned beef gets through, you know, cooking, I don't care about anything. It'll be like, because I still have to like sweep the floor. Oh, God. <sighs> Take a day off because of the snow. Actually, almost two days. And boy, you end up with a wreck. So I need to put the corned beef in the... I added about that much water. Put it in the oven and let her rip. I think the hardest part about this is just cutting up because I have the... I like when I buy potatoes in this mish bag. I just rinse them off really, really good in the mish bag and let them dry. Um, and easy peasy <laughs> as far as potatoes for this because, um, and I like the mish bags because of that. I just rinse them off in the bag. You can like move them around really well in it. 
so it's not a paper towel. I'm waiting for when it's its turn. I think the corned beef will be about half done when I put it in. And then I start chopping up when I put the potatoes in, the cabbage. Um, I don't like the cabbage like disintegrated, so I put it in like at the last moment. So, just the way I like cabbage. Oh my god, it's like I'm being an actual housekeeper. Homemaker. Now, I think to be a homemaker, you have to be married. I'm not married. Uh, unloaded the dishwasher. Wash and clothes in case you can't hear. And I'm scrubbing the knobs to the stove because I look down. And it, you know, it's hilarious because I walk around the house most of the time in my kitchen with out my glasses. When I put my glasses on, I go, wow, is this house filthy? So, I was doing that. Um, scent update. Getting, you know, it not, don't like it quite as well. So I don't know, what are those, the middle notes? But still acceptable, still acceptable. Just giving you the update because it's actually been like an hour and a half since I've got. <laughs> I have coffee, I'm still drinking my breakfast drink. And I'm trying to consume large quantities of water. Uh, large quantities. Um, I feel really dehydrated. But you know, getting over this too. I don't know, I think it was like Oh, not even 48 hours into the process, I go, oh, I feel better. I did not feel better. I, I'm basically, yeah, you know, I'm like, I feel like Stella trying to find her groove. Huh. So, and behind in everything. Um, I'm looking at a pile of paper going, no. Oh, I don't see it. It's not there. No, I don't see it. So, you know, it's not been an hour and a half because it's, oh God, I just got a whole bunch of stuff done. Because I'd taken the garbage out on my way. And, um, no, it's not zero waste. I'm telling you, that has turned into the funniest thing. I no longer have that jar. People keep passing that jar around to see, you know, like if they can seriously in one day just put the amount of waste that they're using in one jar. We can none of us can do it. Zero waste. It's like I don't think so. I think I uh, Snapchat Susan W going, "Yeah, this is my zero waste cuz she had sent me a message about zero waste." It's like, "No." <laughs> it's just two bags, you know, one big bag of recycle and garbage and it's like, "Yeah, this is my zero waste." But it's turned into a novelty now, trying to decide if anyone can go possibly zero waste or even get close to it. Not happening. Nobody I know. I mean, I'm just about ready to use. I've opened this because I have one empty. That would be in my jar. I hope somebody brings me back that jar because that's not actually my jar. That's Anita's and I need to give it back to her. Uh, bad news. I'm talking about Anita. We lost Aunt Sharon. Um, you know, um, she had been feeling ill and just found out like just uh, not that long ago, like literally um, over a month ago, that she was on her way to stage four cancer and that it was everywhere. And uh, we lost her last night. Um, and I, I, you know, so it's, you know, I may be going away next week, um, to the funeral. Um, happens. Uh, she'd been feeling fine and then wasn't, and, uh, it's like it was, she had brain tumors when they started search they, they they were just everywhere they were in her lungs they were in her brain it you know so my dear aunt sharon may you rest in peace 
Well, that's it for me today. I'll put a picture on um, just before this or after this. Some some place here. Thanks for all my new subscribers. I'm just so happy, you guys. Um, it's almost six, so it's the end of my vlogging day. But I'll put a picture on, or and I'll put a picture on Instagram or, or Snapchat or something. <laughs> well, I love you guys. Bye bye.